Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. Binu Satsanga Viveka Nahoi. In English, what this means. Without community, one cannot know meaning. Satsanga, community. Viveka, meaning. However, Rama Kripa Bina <coughs> Sulabana Soi. Rama Kripa Bina Sulabana Soi. Without grace, such a community is not possible. And if such a community is not possible, meaning is not possible. As you reflect on all of the opportunities you have for meaning, remember that is a direct expression of grace. Every morning when we smile at each other, when we listen to each other, that is the grace of God. What else do you want it to be? Ash that is manifested, someone touching you on the head, that's all external. If that is your understanding of grace, one will always be confused and afraid. Sri Rama made his own mind his disciple. This is another focal point that Swami Tejomayananda spoke about in terms of Ramayana. Sri Rama didn't try to make others his disciple. He made his own mind his disciple. For us, karma yoga is the training to make your mind your disciple. Your right actions are an aid to focusing. Your right attitude is an aid to let go of likes and dislikes. Training one's mind can only happen internally and naturally. This cannot be external. This cannot be forced. And that's why earlier this week I shared those who feel experimental drugs in experimental ways will help their mind to be more disciplined. They are confused, more confused than Prince Arjuna. In Srimad Bhagavatam, a tactile definition of mitya or illusion is shared. And that is when one mixes up the means to be the ends. The verses in Bhagavad Gita that we're focusing on now, when one mixes the means to be the ends, they are living in illusion. And technically we call that delusion. Which is why Sri Krishna preceded these verses emphasizing the need to be focused. When one is focused, they see the broad picture. They see the deep picture that this is the means and this is the ends. And that there is no shortcut to knowing one's nature. One has to follow the path of karma yoga. To provide more context to these more technical verses, all that is created has a creator. Everyone agrees. This pencil is created, there's a creator. This laptop is created, there's a creator. This body is created, there's a creator. And the creator knows best about how to use that which is created, correct? In this case, Bic knows how to use this pencil the best. Apple knows how to use this computer the best. But what about one's equipments, body, mind, intellect? 
I can share it's my parents. And to an extent that's true, but they're trying to learn how to use their equipments the best, correct? Which is why the creator shared insights on how to make best use of our equipment, of our, our opportunities with her, with his ambassadors. We call them rishis. A rishi is one whose mind has become so quiet that they are in tune with creation so fully that they can feel the creator. And the quieter the mind, the more happy one is. So what our rishis did is they wanted to share their insights or revelations. And they did this in the form of the Veda. The word Veda means knowledge or insights. The Veda has two subjects. Insights on how to be prosperous in the world and insights on how to be peaceful beyond the world. This is facilitated through four sections. The first section is called the mantra section. And this usually involves one speech only. More comprehensive is the second section, which is known as the brahmana section which involves your speech and uh, body. This is where rituals uh, come into being. Not just mantras, but the rituals that surround that. The third section is known as the upasana section, which requires not just your words, not just your actions, but your thoughts also. The Upasana section works with your mind. And tell me, what is the last section called? The last section is called Upanishad. The technical word is Upanishad. It is the section that focuses on the intellect. Because it is the intellect that is going to have to take us past the ego to the spirit. Our words, our actions, even our thoughts are not capable of doing that. They don't have that ability. There is one Veda. Right now, there are li a little bit more than 100,000 mantras or insights in our Veda. And I'm saying right now, because over history, so many of these insights have been forgotten or destroyed. What Rishi Vyasa did, he knew that all couldn't appreciate these 100,000 insights. So he volumized this into as if four Vedas. If I ever asked you, how many Vedas do we have? You're going to say four, correct? But the more accurate answer is there are four volumes. How many encyclopedias are there? There's only one, but it's typically divided into 26 volumes, one for each English letter. You're all with me? Okay. So now, what Sri Krishna is trying to share here is those who are distracted they don't go fully through the Veda. They get distracted by the mantra portion or the Brahmana portion or the Upasana portion. The verse we just studied focused on rituals. Many feel that rituals are the ends. There are other organizations that only focus on breathing techniques. They feel that's the end. When one is distracted, this is called avidya, or forgetting that the ends of the Veda 
the ends of our life is only when we know our spirit. Which is why we began Bhagavad Gita with know your vastness. Which is why the Upanishad is also known as Vedanta. Technically, you may think anta means the end, but the more meaningful definition is inside. Veda means knowing, and anta means inside. What is the purpose of life? What is inside of you? And the answer to these questions, to this inquiry, is the spirit. Everyone's more oriented now. You look more disoriented, but I, I feel that I've shared this in a simple enough way to be more oriented. We're on verse 43. <clears throat> Kamatmana swarga paraha Janma karma pala pradam Kriya vishesha bahulam Bhogeshwarya gatim prati I'll read this in English from Swami Chinmayananda's commentary. Kamat, Kamat Manaha, one who is full of desires. Swarga Paraha, their goal is heaven. Karma Pala, they are living for results. Janma, Pradam, and this causes them to be born again and again and again. Sharing this in a different way. Those who are distracted, they dilute peace to only be more. They feel more pleasure is peace. More possessions is peace. More position is peace. That's what their understanding and appreciation of peace is. And that's why I shared they're distracted. Peace is knowing your vastness. And here different references are used like one who feels that heaven is the end. And we all know through our study when you're finished in heaven, you come back to earth. Someone who's living for heaven is postponing peace. Tomorrow I'm going to be happy. <laughs> but then tomorrow comes and I think it'll be the day after. Kriya Vishesha Bahula. They prescribe and live by various specific actions. Rituals. Bhogeshwarya Gatim Prati. And they do this for Bhoga. Bhoga, pleasure, as I mentioned. Aishwarya. They do this for position. In one's dilution of what peace is. Or even here, what? Ishwara is. We're trying to pull down the philosophy to our practice. And we're very successful in this. Those who don't understand peace, those who don't appreciate God, their relationship with God is one of a banker, give me this, or a dictator, don't do this to me. Yet if one studies, a puja, which is also a ritual, but studies this from the vision of knowledge. One of the steps we engage in is called sankalpa, or intention. And the primary intention of a puja, or devotion, is Sri Parameshwara Prityartha. That I'm doing what I'm doing to please my Ishwara, to please myself, that is to be peaceful. If you think of your original parent, what 
is the best way to please your original parent for you to be pleased, correct? For you to be cheerful, for you to be meaningful. I'll share more in the next verse from inspiration to application. Your application yesterday was to not engage in any rituals. And for many of you, this shook you. Why? Because you're still externalizing how you're nurturing peace. In our silence retreats, this is one of the instructions or guidance is no rituals. Your application for this morning is, I want you to reflect on what has satsang done for you? Not done to you, but done for you. And I'll elaborate on why I'm asking you to reflect on this tomorrow. I never have enough time. And it's all my fault. <laughs> that I get lost in my thoughts. Shanti, shanti, shanti hi. Be safe, be sound, be serene, be happiness.